Hello, happy Saturday. We have another Saturday food support group. And um, today is going to be very special for me um, because we are updating with some uh, regular members on how they are doing. So um, Tom, as we can see, you are in the hospital. So please update us on what's going on with you. Well, first of all, this has nothing to do with carnivore. <laughs> uh, nothing yes. to do with the diet. The carnivore diet, me shifting to that on February 5th um, was probably, uh, it was why I'm still here, to be honest with you. I think so you. too. I think but so too. As you recall, and I hate that, that I keep, you know, coming up with all these different things of what's going on, but I had, you know, I had the high CT calcium score and then I had a nuclear stress test. Remember I said last week where one doctor said one thing, the other said another. Well, they, they went ahead and still did the uh, the left heart catheter um, where they, they go into your heart and they inject dye to see if you have blockages. Well, I have 100% blockage on one artery, 90% on the Widowmaker artery, and, and two others are partially blocked, or one of two others are partially blocked. So, I, so when he was done, he came in and he says, um, I have bad news for you. We have to do a, a bypass. So... A, a four vessel bypass, which is otherwise known as a quadruple bypass. Um, so um, obviously, I didn't want to hear that. Was not excited about that. No, uh, I was hoping for a couple stents and and then get myself moving on. And but the stents were are not viable. So uh, they were going to do it Saturday. So I was actually ready. To, so I I stayed there. I, so I came there and stayed there overnight. Here, when I say there, I mean here. At the um, hospital. At the hospital, yeah. So I waited all night, and I was supposed to be going out late morning, and then they came in and said, oh, we got to wait till Monday. So I was mentally preparing for Saturday, and then so now I had to wait till Monday. Um, so my son drove all night from Ohio to get there in time. Of course, you know, it was it was moved to Monday. So now I was doing. They gave me the option of actually going home, if you can believe it. Wow. To, yeah. As, don't do anything. Just go home. And, and I'm like, well, then I would have to, and if the surgery is Monday morning at seven o'clock or first thing, first case. So that means we got to come in at four o'clock in the morning and I got to go through all the registration again and, 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 you know, COVID testing and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so the doctor that's doing my, so this is interesting because the whole thing, the whole car, this relates to carnivore, obviously. Yeah. Go so ahead. I'm, like, I'm like, I want carnivore. They're like, what's that? And uh, so they know keto. So so they basically, they're doing a keto diet for me. And while well, I showed you the picture of my eggs that I, I had the same exact eggs and sausage this morning that I showed you, it's disgusting. Yeah, those eggs didn't look real. They, they, they're not, probably not real eggs. I don't, they're not real eggs. Like powdered eggs or something. Yeah. So my wife bought me the, uh, like I told you, she bought me the omelet. Um, but today my son's on his way now. He's going to bring me some pork rinds. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Because I'm like literally starving. I'm like, because, you know, you have to fast. I had to fast the first night and I already was like starving. And I didn't get to eat till like that night. So anyway, so to get, let's go back to this guy. So of course, I'm telling as many people as I can about carnivore. I can't help it. It just comes out, you know. I can't help to try to tell people about what this is done for me. I said, yeah, I'm getting ready to have a quadruple bypass. But let me tell you that, you know, where I was. And, and I was almost dead back in probably in February. I was there i was close i could feel it so whether that saved me or not but oh interesting 100 percent blockage my heart actually created uh, other capillaries from there and so it kept feeding the heart which is why i didn't have a heart what? attack but, so they're like so the the cardiologist like the, the the interventionists were freaking out when they saw that they were like they were scared he actually used the word scared when they saw that like so, your 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 heart had a blockage, yeah. and then it created a new path. It found other other ways to get around the heart to feed feed the blood, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just really crazy. I saw the I saw the uh, he showed me the 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 graph of it, or you can see it on the TV. I was I was awake while it was going on, so they put it through your arm. They put the thing through your arm, and, and they feed it up to your heart, and they eject die. So you're awake the whole time. You're kind of like in a twilight, like uh, you know, in between. Yeah. So, um, so I, I you know, because I, I don't have symptoms, you know, I haven't had a heart attack and I don't have symptoms. So they're like, they're probably wondering how I'm still standing. But 
Uh, you, know, you know all the work I've been doing in my yard this this summer. Yeah. So I mean, like you've been I've digging been, trenches, Tom, and using a pickaxe. And I should not be here right now, but seriously. So, uh, so the cardiologist, he's like a he's a very prominent cardiologist. He, I, I don't know if you heard recently of the pig, the pig story where they transplanted a heart with a pig on a, with a pig. I did hear that. He's the one that did that. So my children oh. is the one that did that. So. But I will tell you this. So we're talking about my my history, you know. And so I talked about carnivore, and he says, "What's what's carnivore?" He doesn't have, he doesn't know anything about carnivore. So I start talking about how I reversed my type two diabetes, you know, the, the whole thing, and that I, I I'm 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 doing a lot of study. I'm research on studies, and I'm I'm finding that the cholesterol hypothesis is, is very weak. The evidence is very weak. And uh, the statin, uh, you know, the, you know, the reason why they're doing statins, that, ev that evidence is very weak. And he said, so you're, so you're saying the Framingham study is, uh, is, is, not, is, is not good? And I said, well, I didn't say that. It's a, that's the longitudinal study. But it's, you know, there, if, you, if you evaluate it from an from a unbiased uh, uh, point of view, it's not as, kind of, it's not as, as uh, stout as they, as they claim it is. So I kind of was like pushing, I was like poking the bear there. And if my wife was here at the time, she would have been hitting me like, don't stop. What are you doing? Shut up. He's going to be cutting into you, and so sorry about the. I'm I'm at a hospital, so ambulance is. No, you're so fine. At, so I'm at the University of Maryland. Uh, I'll show you my view out of my room if I can do it. I'm at the University of Maryland Heart uh, Medical Center. Uh, can I get this even done here? So uh, Larry may have to coach me. No, I know how to do it. I'm just not finding it at the moment. That's okay. That's okay. All right. I don't want to waste your time on that, but no, you're well, fine. I'm going to just do this instead. Oh wow, what a view! So I'm downtown Baltimore, and uh, so those you can see right there. You can see the lights of Baltimore Ravens football stadium just above. Oh the yeah. And right across the street is a nursing, is the University of Maryland Health Science Center. Is a swimming pool on that floor right across there. So I have to wow. be careful. I just have to be careful not to flash anybody, if you know what I mean. So. <laughs> I got the gown on. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, um, you know, I, I really, I, I'm, I'm going to just stay right where I've been saying that um, carnivore saved your life. Um, I, I really so. think that you taking your health into your hands and taking responsibility for your health and doing what your intuition was telling you to do and continuing to do that. And being smart about it, Tom. I've seen all of your research. I've seen the the pages and pages and pages and pages of, of research that you've done. Like you didn't go into this blindly or lightly because somebody on YouTube said it. Like you no, exactly. really took your health into your hands. Um, and the cardiologist I, did say the cardiologist did say that um, that that doing that second CT calcium score saved my life. Um, and I was the one that pushed that. Remember, if you remember, they didn't, they yeah, didn't have yeah. to do anything. So my wife is not very happy about my cardiologist, my normal cardiologist, because I was, she was seen treating me for seven years. So how do you not know that I have 100% blockage, 90% blockage, whatever? So uh, to me, that's I, everybody, everybody should have a CT calcium score. It only costs $90 to $100. Everybody should do a CT calcium score. Everybody should have a a scan of their, their carotid arteries. Everybody should have a hundred a full body MRI at least once every five years or something. It's 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 criminal. But anyways, so oh, sorry. Awesome. No, I just thank you so much for being so transparent. And you were sitting there in the hospital and in joining gown, us in your I got, gown. I got I got like IVs and all sorts of. <laughs> stuff going on here so i didn't i wasn't thinking i was thinking about it i said i don't want to go on emily's channel with my freaking hospital gown and i i was i was debating it and i was like you know what i'm gonna go i'll, I'll go dark first and see what she says and then so no, as soon, as, soon as i saw your name pop up i was just like i gotta hear tom's story i gotta hear tom's story and i want you to know that i and many people are praying for you and um, honestly, uh, I really am believing and knowing that not only are you going to live, 
but you're going to thrive and you're going to, you're going to tell the story and you're not going to shut up. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so I, yeah, excited. Especially if I, if I, if I survive this, which kids are pretty good. I will. Um, I'm actually, you know, he said, I want to read, I'm going to redo your plumbing. And so, I, and, he, and that's how we got into the carnivore discussion. Cause he talked about after the surgery, he's concerned about me taking care of myself. And I'm like, doctor, I've been taking care of myself. I've been zero carb since February. He goes, what do you mean zero carb? Like no, no fibers, no, um, you know, low, oh, he said low, he goes, uh, low carb, low fat. Right. And I said, uh, no, sir, low fat, low carb, no, uh, high fat. He goes, he's like looking at me like I'm on drugs, you know? <laughs> so, and he's, I mean, he's a great doctor. I don't, I'm not disparaging him, but he's so busy doing these surgeries and all that stuff. And he's an older guy. So my wife is a little concerned about that, but he is a prominent cardiologist. So I'm not going to, I mean, he's done what thousands of these things probably. So, Oh, I, I think I'm, I think I'll be okay. I, I'm, I'm fairly confident. I'm nervous, of course, anxious, of course, and nobody wants to get their chest cut open and spread apart. And you know how it is. And then veins taken from, my, oh, the guy that does the scanning, the map to your veins. He said I had the biggest veins he's ever seen. Really? <laughs> maybe, maybe why I probably, I was able to get some new stuff going around the heart there. I don't know. Wow. Um, this is yep. so fascinating. So you were scheduled for a quadruple bypass on Monday morning. Monday morning, first thing, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we are believing with you. We are so excited. Um, I am <laughs> so excited that um, you already made these changes in February of this year, All right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, February of this year. You've already lost 55 pounds? 60 pounds. 60, 60 pounds. pounds. 60 pounds. Probably a little more in the last couple of days. So I'm probably at seven, I'm probably at 65 right now because <laughs> I haven't had much to eat. So um, I already yeah. already went to your first meetup in New Jersey. Um, yes. Already dug trenches in your backyard. You've been thriving. The and the only reason that this is happening is because of the lifetime of eating. You know whatever. That's exactly right. I'm ha I'm I'm here because of my previous way of living not carnivore so yeah. it's very important for people to know that so well now, you always so have to, you're, we're always defending ourselves and to a lot of different people it's really so you have to be prepared because a lot of these people are they'll come back at you with stuff and and you have to do that you have to be ready to respond with an elevator speech that's not just an elevator speech but has some facts in there that's that's not going to overwhelm them but let them know that you know what you, that you mean business know what you're talking about so Absolutely. I don't, I don't want to keep you anymore. So, um, no, for the rest of it, I will, uh, go, I will go dark. So nobody has to look at a guy with a hospital gown, <laughs> but I will lift in cause I want to hear everybody else talk. So. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much, Tom. And I know that, um, I'm sure there's other people on here. Does anybody else want to say anything to Tom before we, we go? He goes. I do. I just want to say I'm so glad that we got to meet in New Jersey, Tom, and I am yes. continual, continually praying for you. Thank you. So Jack. it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. Appreciate it. If you, talk to Karen, if you talk to Karen, tell her I said hello. And I just <laughs> talked to her right before this call, and I will tell her, yes. Okay. Go oh, ahead, so, Becky. Let me, what go, were you let me go mute here because my, my thing's going off. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sympathetic towards all your bands and all your IVs because when I was in the hospital, it was like I was on a leash and if, if you got up and moved, you'd ring a bell or set off an alarm. So even when I was off of the IVs, I kept thinking, where's my IV? I got to not bend my arm. I got to walk with this IV. So it, it kind of like, uh, it's like a little leash there. So I'm sure you'll be glad to have that off when you're done, but we'll be praying for you, Tom. And you look cute in that gown. Very cute. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for, I think that's so important that we have a, a real perspective on this that we didn't say, oh, you know, don't turn your camera on. You're in the hospital. Like, yeah, turn your camera on. Tell the world exactly what's going on because we really have nothing to hide except for to just share our truth and to, to, to reveal exactly what we're going through. I'm so grateful that your life was spared and that um, your life crossed paths with my life and our lives. And um, it's been so great to get to know you, Tom. And um, I can't wait because the best is yet to come.
I'm so excited. And my wife will be texting you Monday. She gets around. She's texting a lot of people, so I'm not sure when she'll get to you. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just so grateful for that connection with your wife. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So we have another surgery update. Um, Becky, I would love for you to share with us um, how your um, surgery went and exactly what the surgery was and, and who you went to and, and what that process was for us. Go ahead, Becky. Okay. Well, I, I didn't really um, prepare to share today. I was just going to listen. So I'll just kind of wing it a little bit. Okay. But if you don't, if you're not up to it, then don't. No, don't. I, I, I'll do kind of a, I'll do a thing, but I might not have everything exactly, <laughs> you know. No, confirm. that's okay. Just off the top of your head. I'm sure we need it just in layman's terms anyway. Sure. Well, some of you know that I had weight loss surgery 11 years ago in 2011, and I did lose 180 pounds. I had a surgery here through um, Kaiser in California, where we live. And um, after a few years, I started feeling like I had a lot of nutritional deficiencies, and I had wanted the surgery reversed, but they kept saying that my blood work was great, that I was doing great. I'm like, well, I have all these other symptoms. My skin is just tearing off of me. I had um, neuropathy that I was developing that I never had when um, I was a diabetic for two years before the surgery. So there was concerns that I had, but they were just always dismissed as like, well, that's not related as to nutrition. And so uh, a few years, four years ago, I had knee surgery on my right knee. I had knee replacement and it tried to trigger um, what they call Parkinson's syndrome. So then I'm like, okay, I can deal with the skin and bandages. I can kind of deal with neuropathy. I had been taking a lot of uh, gabapentin, which I didn't like. So I stopped our drugs. I had the weight loss surgery sort of triggered me the next month after I had the weight loss surgery into a bipolar mania. And I feel like my husband felt like I wasn't getting any fat to my brain. So I went on bipolar medication for about five to six years. I sort of started titrating off of those pretty quickly because of the side effects. So after about five years, I started going off all my meds, but um, I had regained a little bit of weight because I do have a carb addiction. So I had gone from 300 to 135, then to 150, then up to 190. So I'm like, I got to have this knee surgery. I wasn't losing weight. And that triggered something going on. Dr. Cyrus, who I saw with the surgery, thought maybe it was because I didn't heal properly because I didn't have enough nutrition. So that sort of sparked the whole thing of I've got to do something more drastic. So we started doing more keto to lose the weight which really helped. And I got down just effortlessly to 135 doing keto carnivore, low carb. So, but the Parkinson's kept staying and um, I started going on your classes and other people's classes following different, um, like Dr. Barry and other people. And I met, met Emily and I met other people that had worked with their Parkinson's and their bipolar through a carnivore diet. And then I got connected with Dr. Robert Sivas, who is the carb addiction doctor. Um, and he's in Palm Beach, Florida, but he, he's on social media as a carb addiction doctor. So I had to wait six months for a Zoom appointment with him, which I had on June 14th. And I had sent him all my bariatric um, uh, yearly, yearly blood work. And um, just for reference, my primary care doctor and my bariatric doctor and my bariatric internist all said, I'm a rock star. You're so good at taking your vitamins, which I was religious. Your blood work is fabulous. I'm like, well, I don't feel fabulous. Look at my body. Oh, you're doing great. You're 18% fat, body fat. So within a few minutes of me talking with Robert Cyrus on the Zoom call with my husband, he's like, no, your blood work is off on 11 different major um, markers and you're dying i'm looking at you and you have all these issues that i can just see by looking at you i'm like yeah nobody's paying any attention so he says i'll schedule you i had talked to him in my notes and i said well i'm considering weight loss reversal surgery but nobody wants to do it they they said oh it's my original surgeon said it was too dangerous too expensive nobody would pay for it and he wouldn't recommend it and so i'm like my friends was like, just mortgage your house and get it done, you know, but that's, you know, it was hard to do. And so 
I turned 65. This was like five years of trying to get it reversed. So I turned 65 and got Medicare with a supplement, not an advantage plan where you are locked into certain doctors. So I could go to any doctor I wanted to, anticipating that I would see him in the future or have options. So he said, yeah, no, you're malnourished. It will be covered 100% by Medicare. So I didn't have to mortgage my house for $60,000 plus, which was the other doctor's threat, you know? Wow. They wouldn't, they wouldn't diagnose me as malnourished because... They wouldn't admit it, or they just don't know how to interpret your clinical body. You know, they're looking at, like Dr. Cybus has many videos on his YouTube channel, how wrong people are interpreting blood work and how it's based on an unhealthy population as normal for an unhealthy population eating the sad American diet. So it was a miracle to have somebody recognize what I was trying to, you know, do so i so we we made our plans we traveled from san jose to palm beach florida and um dr cyrus uh has an office there uh and so we met with him and we he put me on 10 days of nutritional supplement iv which he made a concoction based on my blood work and uh, the first thing he did was a full body scan. I'm, I don't know if it was a full body MRI, but it just showed that I had very thin muscles, paper thin muscles, um, very thin bones. I had a hiatal hernia for several years that was ignored by Kaiser and other several other doctors that they never diagnosed it. Even though I complained of symptoms, they just wouldn't even do a scan. They just put me on like take Prilosec, which I said, no, I'm not going to do. So he found, and then I had, at the time of my weight loss surgery, the surgeon required that I take the gallbladder out and the appendix out, which were healthy, but he said they're precautionary when he does the weight loss surgery, which I had a duodenal switch and a gastric sleeve at the time. That's a combination surgery. And um, he just, so those, those were very inflamed and had a lot of scar tissue around it. And so he cleaned all that up, which was had been points of irritation for me. The other funny, interesting thing is that when Dr. Cyrus examined my intestines and was reattaching everything to about 90% back to normal, so I'm absorbing 90% of my food that I eat. Wow. Where what before I was, where he said, because my surgery was so drastic, Basically, for the last 11 years, I was just like in a race to eat something and it would just chronic diarrhea um, and or or just malnourishment. Even if I didn't have diarrhea, I just was pooping constantly, like five or six times a day or even 20 times a day if I ate something incorrect. So he said, it, basically, I was just like a concentration camp victim. <laughs> so, so he had me on a special formula that he made and or ordered from the lab that I had three or four days before surgery so I would be able to recuperate and then constant for so I was in the hospital 10 days and in Florida for 17 days and in my naivete I thought we'll just be in and out and come back home <laughs> but it was quite a process and he basically did save my life because I was just absorbing nothing so since I was on okay so I want to be transparent and say the good that I that I felt. And then when I go off of it a little bit, because I still have problems with food and that's why I'm here. I'll tell you what's changed. So because even, even though you had the change in your body, that doesn't change your mindset. Right. And, and so, so that's why we still need to have community and we still need to talk about <laughs> our addiction to foods. But I'm yeah. so glad that your body is absorbing more of the nutrients now. Go ahead. What I've, that I've noticed, okay, so these are, you can kind of see my arm. If anybody, I'll show you because other people might have the same issue. And Dr. Barry, not, not Dr. Barry, Dr. Sivas saw that immediately. And he goes, yeah, that is a vitamin deficiency associated with B vitamins. And he sees it in South Africa where he's from. And you can kind of see, I just hit myself a little bit and it rips. And then my doctor's at, and my standard doctors would say, oh, well, you got a sunburn or you got, you're picking at your skin or you're older. I'm like, I was 55 when this started happening. I'm, like, I'm not 95 and I'm not, I've not been sunburned and I'm not picking at my skin. Something's going wrong. And I saw lots of different specialists that just said, 
put some cream on it or something stupid. Yeah. So that is greatly improving. I used to have five or six bandages on my arm constantly. Like I would just touch a wall and my skin would just rip like an inch. So that's improving. I, I did knock it really hard, but so it's still not there, but it's greatly improving. I had neuropathy starting about a year after weight loss surgery. And they think it was because of the imbalance in trying to formulate the calcium and the vitamin Bs that I was like toxifying myself. Or it could have been too much V6, or it could have been too, it was like nobody can tell because you don't really know. You're trying to take it in, you're trying to measure your blood, but you don't know what you're absorbing. So my neuropathy in my feet was horrible for 11, well, for like 10 years, where even just the sheets of my bed would just kill my toes. That is gone, like within a few weeks. Wow. Gone. I still have neuropathy, but it's, different. It's not so painful. It's more like a little numbness, but I'm, I'm seeing that that's improving. What I was going to say is that when I, this is my beautiful granddaughter. She's visiting. Hi. Her, that's Fiona. Her mom and dad are celebrating their 11th anniversary. So she's, she's keeping us company and her Hi. older daughter. That's Fiona. This is Emily. So hang on. You're leaning on me too hard. And so, um, what I was going to say is that for 11 years, if I just ate carbohydrates, I'd get horrible gas and diarrhea. So then now I'm like, well, let me have a piece of sourdough bread when somebody else is buying it, you know, I'm like, let me try it. Or I'll have like a few pieces of fruit or um, uh, maybe a, a little more of a homemade cookie or something that I'll try. Or the kids like we're babysitting a lot, and I'm like, oh, let me try a bite of your food that you left behind. I'm noticing that the neuropathy and everything starts to flare up, and I'm having more pain in my wow. left hand. My left hand normally doesn't bother me at all because the Parkinson's is all on the right side. So I have like I'm right-handed, and what what prompted me to go on carnivore is I don't have use of my right hand, and my right foot drags, and I walk with a cane. Where before I had knee surgery, I never walked with a cane except the last few days where my knee was hurting so much from the joint. So I'm not walking with a cane for joint pain. I'm walking it for balance issues. And I did have a DT scan done two years ago where they said there was a damage at the dopamine center in my brain. So I'm like, well, why did that get damaged? And so Dr. Cyrus is saying, just keep eating your high fat, your, your brain and everything needs all that. And hopefully everything will repair. But I'm just saying, I noticed for like the time in the hospital and under his care, I was like, I'm not touching anything I am not supposed to touch. And I was pretty, you know, pretty strict and motivated. But now I'm home and I'm like, well, let me have a bite of that little kid's cookie because I'm still having a struggle and I've noticed that I'll get a flare up mm. or, or that my, like, why is my hand hurting? Why is and I'm dragging my leg more? So, um, addiction is real, but I'm, I know, you know what you got to do. So anyway, um, just for reference, I did have the gastric sleeve and the duodenal switch. If anybody had that or wants to call me or talk to me, you I, I'm willing to talk to anybody because it was just through me talking to different people that had the bipolar and the Parkinson's that I found Dr. Sivas. They recommended me to talk to him and make an appointment. So I'm kind of like, like Tom said, you're just like an evangelist. Like I went to a second opinion on my knee surgery a few days ago with a new doctor and his nurse came in and was asking me all the questions. And she said, my mom had weight loss surgery 10 years ago. She's 80 pounds. She's starving to death. I'm like, tell her to call me. And I gave her like your information and Dr. Cyrus's. So it's like, you just cannot help but share. So I'm, I'm so happy that I found you guys. Brett Lloyd was a big person that I started following. I don't know how I got on his, his feed, but he told me about a guy in Texas that told me about Dr. Cyrus, then you guys confirmed that it was like, hey, go ahead for it. Because I'm like, I just met this guy on the internet and now I'm going to fly to Florida. So just, the, you know. That's awesome. That's everybody's cool. been such a good support. And if anybody wants to reach out and talk to me, I'll be happy to talk and help them understand what might help them. But Absolutely. thank you guys all for your support. And I'm waiting to go to a meetup. I want to have some fun. I want to go kayaking. I want to go hiking. 
<laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, just use this time to heal and um, the meetups will come, I'm sure. Yeah. And um, thank you so much for being transparent about your story. I think that this message needs to get out to so many people who are thinking, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm just going to get the surgery. And then you had no idea what you were opening yourself up to with the Parkinson's, with the bipolar, with the malnourishment. Um, and now you have taken your health back into your hands and you have reversed that surgery. And I am so happy. And I got to tell you that we have been covering you in prayer and we I, will continue. I wanted to, I want to say one thing. So for 20 years, I was a massage therapist and I was known because I was super strong. Like everyone was like, oh, Becky's so strong. And I did a lot of um, a deep tissue massage. And the first year that I had weight loss surgery, I was extremely diligent with my protein. I was like a rock star with all my vitamins. I was exercising. I was 50, 54 years old. I lost 26 pounds of muscle even though I was fighting not to do that. And that really impacted my career. So I'm not working anymore because I can't even cut up a carrot. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get back into that field and heal because I love being a massage therapist. So, That's awesome. So you can see that that surgery, no matter what you're doing to try to keep yourself healthy, it's just like coming right out of you. Yeah. So don't That's, have that surgery. <laughs> don't have that surgery. It is not worth it. It is not worth it. And if you did have that surgery, listen to the story and have hope that there is, there is a solution. There is an answer. Um, uh, so thank you so much. And I am so grateful to still hold your hand um, and to give you this support space um, to be able to hopefully be in your mind all throughout the week that that cookie's not worth it. That sourdough is not worth it. Um, that extra little thing that you know, you know that you know that you know, you've gone through all of this work to get to this healing and you're just gonna continue to heal. And I'm, I'm so thankful. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, love you guys. Love you too. Um, and I wanted to let everybody know that two of my very best friends in the whole wide world are here. Um, Justin, Giebler and Thomas Clark. Um, so guys, if you want to say anything, I am so honored. I just want to roll out the red carpet and just say thank you for honoring us with your presence. Oh, thank you, Jim. Uh, we can come celebrate, saw the video, um, you know, you being able to quit your nine to five. Uh, um, to, I can't, to... I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. I don't know if it's, it's like crackly. Okay, just a second. Tom, did you want to say something while he's fixing whatever that is? Hey, everybody. Hi. It's good to see you. My bestie. Um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, I met Emily, uh, must have been three years ago by now. Yeah. Yeah. It's been quite the journey. So we were fortunate to have a nice group of people that started this journey together. And, you know, it's kind of, it's one of those things where we're always helping each other and then we're always excited by the new levels that the other person achieves, you know, kind of keeps us going, gives us new ideas because we're all very passionate about the topic, about helping people. So it's pretty amazing that uh, we all started in uh, video groups like this for meter x and then we've all kind of expanded out into our own niches you know and we're all very excited to see emily take this on full time so it was a big deal like i like to say she's always raising the bar <laughs> and i know i know her dad larry is always there helping her so i want to make sure he gets appreciated for giving her the boost and helping rein in the chaos of <laughs> success so you yeah you know me you know that I need constant like um um reminders to to get anything done we all wish we had a Larry <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great um yeah I mean we started out in meetings just like this and it was crazy because we had never experienced anything like that and then as we started helping these newbies 
you know, come into this space and, and, and just realize their power, their strength that they had in choosing certain foods, it became like uh, addictive to us. And we, it was just like the highlight of our life to be able to run meetings like this. Um, and, uh, that was, that was so fun. So thank you so much for being on this journey with me, Tom. Yeah. And likewise, I mean, we kind of had a dust up over at me, our ex and Emily was the one who, uh, stuck up for me. Oh, never forget that. Not a problem. It was my pleasure and honor and, uh, it was the right thing to do. So I'm always gonna, always gonna do what, um, that fire in my belly is telling me to do. But yeah. um, you were worth it. You're worth it to to champion you. Yeah, you know? and I look back on it, and we were spending so much time over there as volunteers, <laughs> and now we turn we turn that time and energy into our own niche and kind of expand into bigger spaces. You know, so it was a wonderful opportunity. I think it was the best thing ever that we got kicked off. I'm yeah. I'm I am literally. I look back now, and I'm like. I am so grateful that I got kicked off on Meet RX. <laughs> I am so grateful because it it, yeah. it made me who I am today. Um, right. Go ahead, the other Tom. You wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah. I've been curious about that for quite a while because I remember I, 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 I saw a video of yours uh, that the one after you got kicked off there. So I've always been curious about that. So you can tell me on the side or anytime you want about that. Um, I could probably do like the... PC version, um, basically, um, I don't know if I can do this version. Um, I will try. Um, we were asked in a, a group uh, coaches meeting if we could improve anything on the website. And Tom, um, and he he's very open about this, um, is autistic. He runs a, a group on Facebook called Autistic Carnivores. And it's like uh, over a thousand people. I, I don't even know how much it's up to now. Um, and so uh, he pays attention to detail. And so he recognized uh, that there was a kind of a, a problem for some people that were a little bit older or just not technolog technologically adept that whenever they would come in that they wouldn't know how to use Zoom. And so Tom uh, and, and I and many other coaches had to really go through the motions and explain to people how to use Zoom. So Tom, uh, I believe, made a video um, that he could send out to people on the steps. And apparently somebody else in MeetRx had made a video, but it just wasn't very clear. And so they were asking. And so we said, hey, I, I think that maybe we could be a little bit clearer on the instructions. And that person took it very personally, um, did not like the criticism, did not like the um, putting in our two cents. Um, and it basically just didn't, didn't like that. So long story short, um, uh, Tom became a target. And then this person behind the scenes, not Sean Baker, um, came and asked me my opinion. And I said, um, you don't want my opinion. <laughs> you do not want my opinion at all. And she was like, no, 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 no. I really want your opinion. I really want your opinion. I really want your opinion. You're so kind. You're so sweet. You're so beautiful. I want to know what you think. And so I told her in the nicest wearing my kid gloves, sweetest way I could, and I became the target. <laughs> so um, I think within like 24 hours, both Tom and I were kicked off of the MeetRx platform, um, and it had nothing to do with Sean Baker. Um, and Yeah, that's what I was curious about, because I was like, okay, do I need to un not, not follow no, Sean? Or? No, no, we, we adore Sean. Okay. We adore Sean. And he just okay. isn't really great at managing people. And that's okay. We don't go to Tom, we don't go to Sean for his ability to manage people. We go to his uh, him for his ability to be a doctor and to tell us these amazing things about meat. Um, so pretty yeah. Weak, weak. Yeah, that was pretty weak for that kickoff was pretty weak. Yeah. And uh, you know, dirty, dirty pool. 
but it, it, it all had to happen. It all had to happen. And it made Tom who he is. It made me who I am. Um, it strengthened us. It really did. Um, and, uh, it, I, I will forever be grateful for my, my meter X, um, because it, it showed me the power of community, the power of talking. Um, and I had no idea. I had never even been on zoom before I did meter X. So for me to discount that would be, um, like cutting off my right arm. Like, it's just ridiculous. It made me who I am. And I got my certification to be a carnivore coach through Sean Baker. So I am extremely grateful and I love everything that he is doing. Um, it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I will, I will sing their praises forever. Yeah. I, uh, I first met Sean back in 2018 when he was at the indoor rowing competition and he's been, uh, well, even before I actually met him in person, he'd been very supportive of me on social media and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, when this all blew up, he told me that, uh, you know, he didn't, he, he had a, a contractual obligation to this person that didn't like me or whatever she did not like you <laughs> <laughs> no she still doesn't i'm sure I'm, she does I'm, not like we've been blacklisted like we can't even yeah. be interviewed on on rivero health <laughs> do not so, do not interview tom clark or emily penton but sean did <laughs> say that he would support whatever else i did outside of the platform and uh so you know i don't talk to sean that often anymore because he's busy if you guys watch his video you know he's globe trotting right now is all over the place but um uh you know it was i'm sure it wasn't easy for sean either but he was in a pickle so it is what it is and it, it really in hindsight it was a moment of creative destruction because it kind of launched a lot of people in other directions because there's a lot of other people that were disheartened by the by the event so um I, you know, it was a little, it stung a little at the time, but you could see the benefits of it afterward pretty easily. So, and then, you know, it probably just reinforced that bond between, you know, me and Emily and even Justin and Joe and Raymond and a bunch of other people. So there's lots of people from that platform I still keep in touch with, including Brett. I mean, Brett Lloyd came oh, up yeah. there. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Becky. Becky, yeah, is a long, long list. Long so, list. Yeah. So in the end of the day, it's just a little drama, a little drama speed bump, and it sent us all spinning into better orbits. So it's a good thing. Yeah. It really is. And um, in the chat, my dad wrote, thanks, Tom Clark and Justin, for encouraging Emily over the years. You all have helped so many people for free. And I will never forget that you guys were the ones that whenever, like, I, my whole world came crashing down when I got kicked off of MeetRx. Like, I had all of these clients scheduled and all of my, my appointments got canceled and I, I couldn't even go to the meetings anymore. And I just turned to you guys and I was like, I can't, I can't coach anymore. I can't coach anymore. And you guys were like, yeah, you can go do it on your own. You and charge a little more <laughs> and charge a little more. And I did. Um, and it, it was amazing that I didn't have that belief in me. The second that I got the air knocked out of my lungs, I didn't have any belief in me, but you guys did. You guys believed in me. And Tom, you're the one who told me to start my own YouTube channel. And I laughed. I thought that was ridiculous. Um, but obviously there was a, a totally different purpose and plan for my life. And I thank you all for being the catalyst for me to believe in myself. Yeah. Well, I think we all needed that from each other, you know, and I, I got to say in the beginning, I was fortunate to, to have Sean's year because I would want to do a video on something and then somebody else had just released a video on it. And Sean told me, he's like, oh no don't worry about repeating yourself or someone else. He's like, I'm still getting the same questions over and over again. People need to hear it, you know? So just put yourself out there and just do it. And don't, don't worry about little stuff like that, you know? And uh, so, you know, all those little 
private conversations we have amongst ourselves, and I, I get to text and chat with Justin and Emily and Raymond and Joe Zumbo and stuff and many other people all the time. All those little conversations are the glue that doesn't just hold us together, but helps us build and uh, get the message out to more people, you know, and we learn from each other all the time. You know, so we all, have, you know, we, we don't just have different niches. We have different personalities. And then we, we see the uh, successes for so many different people in so many different situations. You know, Emily and Justin work with people, you know, they're both uh, licensed therapists in one form or another or one state or another. Well, <laughs> in the we, have our masters. Presence. we have our master's. Yeah, so they have they have that experience, and I I have a fairly deep reach into the autistic community and stuff like that. So we uh, we're able to uh, uh, sort of broaden each other's awareness of of both how to help people and all the nitty gritty details of all the uh, all the unique people out there that need help. So you know. awesome! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm blessed. Um, Justin, did you get your uh, mic to work? Uh, let's see. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Semi. Awesome. Semi. Uh, we'll have to roll with it. Uh, Zoom hates Bluetooth. If it gets too bad, I, I can hop off. Yeah. So I want to say congratulations, uh, Emily. Um, really proud of you. Really awesome. Uh, we're almost carnivore twins. Uh, you started the same year as me, a couple of months before me, if I remember right before yep. I started on this journey. And so I wanted to say something that repeating questions, getting the same questions and stuff like that. Um, it's, a, it's a whole new world. We are literally building a new reality from mm. here on out. And of course, there, you know, it's, I'm, I'm sure the people that uh, were taking um, boats, well, ships out to the United States, there's probably a lot of questions. And when people kept arriving, they probably kept asking, asking the same questions over and over again. <laughs> So we, we are pioneers. We are, this is the new world. It's a, a mix of the digital world, but finding that ancient nutrition again uh, to making us the optimal humans, the optimal uh, apex predators. I know people have questions about the word predators, but that's, that's where it comes from. And I think we need to embrace that. And it, it's a fight on a lot of fronts. Um, and we, uh, you know, some of us may think I'm um, the only one I know, but, you know, after you do this for a while and people see your conviction, people see your dedication, they will start to have questions. You know, I have a friend who's diabetic. Uh, he was controlling it fairly a little bit low carb, uh, but he started going carnivore, you know, and that's like so cool. And we've been friends for like two decades you know, like elementary school, we've known each other, Wow. you know, um, and, you know, for, and then just every day, like friends and stuff like that are, are giving me questions and family members and things like that. And, you know, if nothing else, maybe someone in your circle will just eat a bit more meat because I think just eating more meat, you know, maybe they were stuck with the six ounces a day or some crazy guideline, right? And you get them up to maybe a pound a day. Like, I really think even that much can help a lot of people. And um, the more of meat that they're eating, the idea is the less of other junk yes. that they're not eating. And so it's kind of snowballs and has that effect. And maybe it's enough to where they start to get and feel those effects that we get and we all know about. And then the next thing you know, you've got a carnivore buddy to go out and have some ribs with or cook together or something. So it is a slow, slow haul that it's going to be for a while. But I truly believe within the next five to 10 years, we will hit that tipping, tipping point. And it's going to be a carnivore world. And all of us here, we are the beginning. We are the revolution. Uh, we are the pioneers. And you should be proud of that, you know. Um, because it truly is a new world and, and we're building it and we're going to build it the way we want it to be uh, with peaceful parenting, much love for one another, kindness, uh, trauma focused as far as relieving and calm mind, uh, all of us being the optimal physical, mental, spiritual that we all know that we can be. So that's, mm. that's the future I'm trying to manifest. And I think you all to come along and those that disagree, 
uh, evolve or perish, right? And so it's coming. <laughs> We're doing it. And I ain't slowing down. I ain't going to censor myself. I'm not going to, you know, tiptoe or anything. I'm, I'm going to be hardcore about it every day, all the time. So that's that's just how I am, though. But yeah, much love, Emily. Um, and thank you for being a big part of this, this revolution, because it's bigger than me. It's bigger than Tom. Uh, it's bigger than anyone here. It's, I mean, we're, we're setting stones for 500, 1,000 years into the future of humanity. That's what we're doing here in these kinds of meetings. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Do y'all see why they're my best friends? Like, we have these conversations all the time. Like, I love these guys. Love these guys so much. Thank you, Justin. Um, and I have just, I have really enjoyed how iron sharpens iron and you know you have really shaped a lot of my thoughts um and it if anything it's because you've asked questions you continue to ask questions and you make me think why do i think this way why do i believe this way why do i act this way um and i just i really enjoyed uh your friendship thank you so 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 much um, so if you guys want to follow them, um, Justin is at alloutlife.carnivore. Tom is Thomas uh, at Thomas Allen Clark on Instagram. Um, that's Thomas A-L-A-N Clark on Instagram. Um, and they have tons of amazing information. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of uh, videos on, uh, I have a channel called Meet Mosaic on YouTube, and then I have a Meet Mosaic Facebook group now, and uh, of course, Autistic Carnivores, so everybody's welcome. Yep, 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 Meet Mosaic, um, because it's just, it's we have a bunch of different people on every week, um, and uh, it's just amazing, and we just talk about meat talk about this. Um, so thank you guys so much. Um, it was such an honor. I didn't know you guys were coming today. It was so great whenever your faces popped up. Um, it just warmed my heart. So thank you for being with me. All right. Um, this has been an incredible meeting. Um, we've got just like a couple more minutes. Does anybody have a question or, um, or a, a victory or anything that they want to add? If not, I will go ahead and wrap this up. Um, this has been a, just a beautiful meeting. Um, I'm so excited about the healing that is happening with Tom, um, the healing that is happening with Becky, um, and to get to have a, a little inside uh, information from my, me getting kicked off MeetRx, um, and then to introduce you guys to two of my best friends in the whole world. Um, and, uh, I, I thank you guys so much for being here with me and I will see you next Saturday. Thanks. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the group. Um, there is always, uh, so much beauty in being transparent and in really recognizing that we're all not alone on this journey. Um, and so if you want to feel free to join the Saturday um, support groups and um, they're every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And if you need more individualized care, um, then reach out to me and email me at innerclaritysystem at gmail.com. And I would love to walk through and show you what it looks like to work with me one on one. All right. Thanks.